Emotional intelligence refers to the ability to identify and manage one's own emotions as well as navigating successfully through the emotions of others. You can't manage other people's emotions, but you can navigate successfully through other people's emotions and around other people's emotions. Well, welcome back to Think Like a Champion, our 77th podcast dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. Now, before we dive into today's content, I want to thank everyone who's written a review or shared this podcast on social media. Thank you for helping us expand our community of champions. That's what we're building, a community of champions, a family of champions, and it all starts with thinking like a champion. So every post that you write, every review, it really does make a difference in helping us reach more people. So thank you, and please keep sharing. Now... For the last few weeks, we've been talking about money mindsets, and everything we talk about has to do with the relationship, whether it's our relationship with God, our relationship with money, our relationship with food. Today, I want to talk to you about your relationship with your emotions, and we're going to get into what I believe to be the secret and the keys to emotional intelligence, which leads to amazing decisions when you master your emotions, when you master your feelings, when you learn to navigate them, to harness them, then you begin to harness life. And if you grew up with good parenting, and not all of us did, maybe you didn't grow up with good parenting, but if you grew up with good parenting, it means that you were taught emotional intelligence. What does that mean? It means resilience. It means boundaries. It means the basic mechanics of healthy relationships. What are those, what does that consist of? Listening. It consists of kindness. It can really relationships are the fruit of the spirit. So now listen, if you didn't uh, get parented well, it's not too late to reparent yourself. Really we all have to do that to one degree or another. Some, it's, all, it's a spectrum. So some have the most extreme reparenting to do in their lives, and some maybe a mild level of reparenting in their lives. But all of us have to learn to reparent ourselves. And emotional intelligence, let's talk about it, because I'm going to give you some, uh, some groundwork from Scripture, from the Bible And it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, as much as it has to do with you, be at peace with all men. As much as it has to do with you, be at peace with all men. Notice when it has to do with somebody else, there's not a lot that you can control. But when it has to do with you, everything is under your control. And um, really, he who rules his own spirit, the Bible says, is better than him that captures an entire city. He who rules his own spirit, or in this case, he who rules his emotions. So let's talk about this. Uh, So giving you a definition of emotional intelligence, it refers to the ability to identify and manage So think about this. It's the ability to identify and manage your own emotions. And additionally to that, how to navigate. It means to navigate successfully through the emotions of others. I want to say that again, that emotional intelligence refers to the ability to identify and manage one's own emotions as well as navigating successfully through the emotions of others. You can't manage other people's emotions, but you can navigate successfully through other people's emotions and around other people's emotions. Emotional intelligence really consists of three skills, at least. It's the skill of self-awareness, the skill of naming the emotion or calling out on yourself, calling yourself out on what that emotion is, and then harnessing that emotion for problem solving and harnessing those emotions for peacemaking skills. So it comes back to that verse, as much as it has to do with you, be at peace with all men. I think it's the desire of every 
of every human being that is of sound mind or even remotely close to sound mind, we want peace with people. And we want to be at peace with people. We don't want war. We don't want struggles. We don't or struggle struggling relationships. We don't want to strive with people. We don't want to fight people. We don't want to be offended or be offensive. But in our world today, it's it's impossible not to offend, and it's impossible not to be offended by. But what we can do is when we have these like these three legs of emotional intelligence, which is self-awareness, then naming the emotion, and then harnessing the emotion, that is where you become a success in life. Listen, if you can develop self-awareness, develop naming emotion without beating yourself up about it. Okay, that's anger working in me right now. All right, that's jealousy that I'm dealing with right now. You have to be able to tell on yourself to yourself without condemning yourself and without beating yourself up. But we have to have this, this, this our, we have to learn to harness self-awareness, to awaken to self-awareness and then to to name the emotion and then harness it. Okay, so uh, I think of this verse a lot when it comes to how to look at others. Luke chapter 6, verse 42. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take that speck out that's in your eye when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? He says, you hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Now, this is a powerful verse because Jesus is showing us something really amazing because we, we think we're not supposed to, we kind of lean in one direction or the other. Either we're judgmental all the time or we're not judgmental at all, but we can judge less and we can still be able to help somebody else get the speck out of their eye, but he wants to put it in perspective. Before you do, like, hey, I'm all about somebody helping me get the speck out of my eye, as long as they first are taking the log out of their own. And I don't have a problem taking the speck, helping somebody see and take the speck out of their eye if I first take the log out of my own eye. It's self-awareness. That's what this is. This verse is really, it, 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 encaps, it encapsulates or it truly captures the idea of self-awareness. Okay, I, that log between me and that guy, it's not his eye. It's not, the log is not in his eye. It's, it's, from, it's from my eye to him, not from his eye to me. And I need to take that out. And then, oh, now I see clearly what, was really bothering me about that person is just a speck, you see, because I first deal with self. When you first deal with self, then it becomes so easy to help, inspire, encourage, and strengthen other people. Then you're not being self-righteous. You're not being judgmental because you are addressing yourself first. It happens so often. We're so blind to the log in our own eye. In fact, we think the log is in their eye, and so we're constantly trying to tell, tell them and trying to cut it down and chop it off, but it's our own eye. So as soon as you chop it off thinking it's somebody else, it just keeps growing from your, your own self, lack of self-awareness, hypocrisy, so to speak. So take the, learn to take the log out of, your, out of your own eye. Listen, people that are, how can I say it? People that are butts, a person who's a real butt in life, you know? They're not butts because they have flaws, because we all have them. We, we, we all have both butts and we have flaws. But a person is not a butt because of their flaws. A person is a butt because they're not aware of their flaw or they're not willing to admit their flaw. This is where damage operates in the soul. This is where 
our human soul gets damaged. It's in flawed mindsets. It's, it's in flawed thinking. It's in Im imbalanced emotions and presumptuous beliefs. When we, when we think the problem is always somebody else, it's presumptuous. It's a presumptuous belief and it is a flawed mindset. Self-responsibility, personal responsibility is one of the most powerful things in this world. If you want to be able to control your attitude and control your emotions, it starts with taking personal responsibility for the energy that you create. And when it's um, always looking at the other person as a problem or as the problem, that's what's called presumption. And in Proverbs chapter 13, is something very liberating in the Bible. Presumption leads only to strife. So if presumption leads only to strife, as it says here, then we have to have a, we have to have a strife detector. If, if we're experiencing strife, conflict, in an ongoing conflict in a relationship, there is presumption somewhere. When we, when we have ongoing conflict, we're either presuming that that person is going to fix whatever's wrong with them, or we're presuming we've already addressed whatever's wrong with us. And presumption leads to strife. So the greatest point of view that any human being can ever have in any relationship is one of humility. This is the most important characteristic in a human, in a human life besides love itself, because sometimes even love is sometimes nebulous and vague and, and, and not necessarily clear what love really is. Sometimes we just read, we, we, we have our own definition. But humility, whew, we have to really be humble. You know, when it comes to a lack of self-awareness um, or a lack of naming our own emotion, we all think that we are independent thinkers we all think we reason based on facts and evidence, but the truth is our brain is spending most of its time justifying what our heart has already decided we want. So our brain just justifies it. And there's no way to fix that until you learn to recognize what your heart is saying and that you're willing to admit it. Acknowledge that you have weaknesses, acknowledge that you have blind spots. The important thing is just that we're self-aware about it. And if we know our weaknesses, then they stop being liabilities in our life. When we acknowledge and begin to personally take personal responsibility for our own weaknesses, that they stop really being our liability. You can have a weakness without it being a liability when you're willing to be have the humility to acknowledge that weakness and have the humility to begin to attack that area of your life. Otherwise, what happens is we become enslaved to our mind's, our mind's defense mechanism, okay? Our self-righteous defense mechanism. Let me tell you how to truly approach life with God with and with people. Okay, Jesus tells us something very powerful in Luke 18, in verse 9. Jesus gives us a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and they were self righteous or judgmental towards others, verse 9 says. And Jesus tells this parable two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee. You know this story, right? One, a Pharisee. But it's in, get a hold of this. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Now you got to understand, a Pharisee was seen at the time as the religious leader. The tax collector was seen at that time, and I guess we see tax collectors <laughs> the same way sometimes, but a tax collector was really seen as a, a bad person because they always took advantage of people. Now, in some countries and in some, some governments, they take more advantage of others. They take advantage of others more than other countries do and more than other governments do, but there's some of that everywhere. But here, this person who was a tax collector was considered a, ta a tax collector in the Bible at this time was considered like the lowest 
dirtiest, filthiest, thievery, stealing, undeserving, just, just criminal, okay? Because they just add on so many taxes for themselves and they would make you pay and they were, it was like the mafia and it's just making you give them your money. Okay, so that's tax collector at the time. So 11, verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed this with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Now watch this. He's praying with himself. He's just praying to self and he thinks he's praying to God, but it's just all about himself. He's praying to, it says praying to himself. He's just focused on self. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not even like this tax collector. And then he starts talking about what he's done. So he says what he's not, and now he's telling him what he's done. He's just really talking to himself because God doesn't listen to this arrogance. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. So he's just, notice, whenever it's focused on you and all about you, you're just having a conversation with you. But this tax collector, verse 13 says, standing far off would not so much as even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. One says, I don't do this and I'm not like that and I'm not like that. I'm not even like this guy. But this guy is like, won't even look up. <laughs> He's like, God, have mercy on me, the sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Wow. When we receive mercy, when we realize our need for mercy, we'll be way more generous with giving it to. Jesus goes on to say, I tell you the truth, this man... This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Boy, I love that verse. So many people, it's so focused on self. We're just exalting ourselves. It's, it's, it's what people do who are insecure. It's what people do who feel inferior. They try to exalt themselves. Uh, superiority, that, that idea that I'm better than somebody else is really rooted in inferiority because I feel less than, so I try to become more than. But the humble, man, don't be humble because somebody else is. Don't let them set your thermostat. Don't be humble if they're humble. Be humble because Jesus is humble. Be humble because you have flaws and you have weaknesses and I have flaws and I have weaknesses. So being humble should be easy for us. It shouldn't be hard. It's only hard when we're arrogant. It's only hard when we're deceiving ourselves. See, self-awareness has to include humility, self-awareness and self-acceptance. Like this guy says, Lord, I, I, he can't even lift his head up. So he said, have mercy on me. As soon as you cry for mercy, mercy is, it, it, it just gets God's attention immediately. God gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. You think about it, God's grace is his, God's riches, I like to say it, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. It's God's free, unmerited love and favor. God's riches at Christ's expense. It's free, but the only thing that we have to do to receive it is be humble, like acknowledge our need for it. I need God's riches at Christ's expense because I can't afford God's riches at my expense. I need his mercy. I need his favor because I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. 
I could never do enough to earn it. So there's this humility that leads to self-acceptance because I need your mercy, Lord, so now I can accept myself because you're merciful to me. And that self-acceptance with self-awareness leads to growth, emotional health. It's, it's all about, it produces emotional health. It's important to learn how to be aware of your weaknesses without condemning yourself because it could easily go that direction if you just think about all that's wrong with you. So that's what makes us self-conscious. You see, we become self-conscious when we feel like we're being observed but not approved. You, get, you become emotionally healthy when you realize you're approved by God. Now you don't see yourself low. You see yourself accepted by God and now you treat others that way because it's free and it's a gift. This self-awareness makes you self-accepting and it makes you healthy. Self-awareness leads to self-acceptance, which leads to empathy for others because empathy is in proportion to your self-acceptance. Like when I realize I can accept myself only because God accepts me on the merits of Christ Jesus, now there's this awareness and now the more that I realize God's been merciful to me, the more empathy that I begin to operate. And empathy and emotional t intelligence is the currency of relationships. It's the currency of a healthy soul. Emotional intelligence is the currency of, rela of healthy relationships, the currency of a healthy soul, the currency of making good decisions. Listen to this verse in James 1. This let this verse guide you. Let this guide your emotional intelligence, your emotional awareness. It says it is something very powerful in James 1.19. Be quick to hear. So quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now I see this as a progression. He says, be quick to hear. Step one, be quick to hear. So be on the listening end of life. Be quick. Be in a hurry to hear. Be in a hurry to listen. Too often we're in a, hear, we're in a hurry to speak. We're in a hurry to get them to stop. With the, finish your sentence so I can say what I want to say. Be in a hurry to listen. He says, be, man, this will take you so far if you just take, if all you hear is this point, this will take you far in life. Be quick to hear. Be in a hurry to listen. Because if you'll be in a hurry to listen, then you will be slow to speak. And if you are slow to speak, you will become slow to anger. If you are in a hurry to listen, you will become slow to speak. And when you're in a hurry to listen and slow to speak, you become slow to anger. You are not angered easily. You become a conflict. You begin to create a conflict-resolving skill. You begin to be a conflict-resolving person, a problem-solving person, and in life, you will eventually be compensated in direct proportion to the problems you solve. You, you won't be compensated just from having skill. You have to have a skill that ultimately solves a problem. And conflict-resolving skills are what is in need in this world more than anything else. Conflict resolving skills, negotiating skills, not negotiating to try to sell something to somebody, but negotiating to win somebody's heart, to win the hearts and minds of the people in your life so that you can truly be healthy and be contributing something healthy into the relationships of the people that God has put in your life. We eliminate negativity from our lives and we stop becoming a burden to this world when we follow this James 119 formula. Be quick to hear, be in a hurry to hear, be slow to speak, and you will become slow to anger. There's a lot of anger in this world 
And you know where anger starts is fear. We're afraid that somebody's taking something from us. We're afraid somebody's holding something out on us. We're afraid the fear of missing out, FOMO. We're afraid of missing out. It makes us angry at ourselves. makes us angry at somebody else. If we can harness this thing, harness this anger, because Jesus did say, he said, be angry, but don't let it turn into sin. So anger in and of itself is not a sin, but it will lead to a sin if you don't learn to harness it. And the way to harness it is be in a hurry to hear, be in a hurry to listen. Okay, what, what are you trying to say? Come, say that one more time. I want to really understand where you're coming from. Ah, uh, this is, this is the secret to any relationship, any negotiation. Be in a hurry to listen. Be slow to speak. And you'll become slow to anger. And you will be a problem-solving machine. And you will find joy, peace, happiness, success. All because you learn how to be emotionally intelligent, through the James 119 formula. Listen, we're out of time, but thank you for joining me on Think Like a Champion. I want to ask that you share this with someone who needs to hear this. Maybe you heard something, and you're like, oh, man, I know five people that could really benefit from this, but it's going to start with me, and I'm going to tell them, hey, this really helped me. This inspired me. You may not even need this, to hear this, but it really impacted my life. Rather than, I know some people that better get this because I would need them. I need them to change. Share it because of love. Subscribe also to this podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for those of you who give and support this, this ministry, this community of champions. You can make your gift and donation to lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Tax deductible donation to our nonprofit organization, lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Pay it forward by giving and helping us get this message out to more and more people. Okay, lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Until next time, God loves you, I love you, and man, you're doing so good at thinking like a champion. Everything's going to be all right. God bless.